So in this segment, we're going to be discussing Tory infighting, and it's public. It's public. They're fighting in the select committees. Yes, I'm a bit excited because I'm a I'm a drama type guy. You know, as long as I'm not involved in it, I, I enjoy watching it, especially from politicians. Because you have open, open infighting from Kemi Badenoch and this MP Jones, uh, something in the select committees, and you know it gets a bit feisty. Honestly, it gets a bit feisty, and um, she kind of sasses him at one point as well. It's beautiful. So let's go into the clips. There might be a bit of overlap because they're from like a couple of different sites, but yeah. I don't agree that it's a 180 degree uh, turn. I think it's a so context. They're talking about the EU retention bill, or as I call it, the kind of EU EU era deregulation bill. So they're talking about the uh, the one that was meant to get rid of the 4,000 kind of EU era regis- leg- legislation, and the the fact that the Tories have kind of taken that down to 600. So some Tory MPs are calling that a U-turn. They're very angry about it. So she was getting lit up a couple of weeks ago by the ERG in the House of Commons. And she was also getting pieced up by Labour. And she was like, oh, I must be doing something right if both sides are after me. me." And I was just, I felt so embarrassed for her. So let's, uh, let's carry on. Change uh, in, in the process. We could, have a, you know, we could have a debate about that. But my view is that what we want to do is get rid of laws that we don't need. And there is a process for that. It is not the bonfire of regulations. We are not arsonists. I'm certainly not an arsonist. I'm a conservative. So why did you push the 4,000 bill in the first place? And, you know, there's no, she can't make the argument of anything because she's in the cabinet. She voted for it. So, you know, for her to argue, I'm not an arsonist, I'm a conservative. It's just baloney because she voted to get rid of the 4,000 legislations. So this is nonsense. I don't think a bonfire of regulations is what we wanted. What we wanted was reform and removal of things that we did not need. And so why did you push it then in the first place? And this change in process, which I think is still a technical change, is what is going to deliver that. And it's already creating a lot of the impetus, a lot of the momentum, which uh, in terms of showing people what has happened so far. Until I did this, no one knew what was happening. No one knew what was being revoked or reformed. And we could end up in a situation where we're telling us ourselves that there's a big bonfire of regulations and no one would have known what would happen until after the sunset and then people saw that some things were still there uh, which we thought we'd repeal. I got, I got news for you, Kemi. I got, I got news for you. That was the point of the bill. That's why you guys done it that way because you want to get rid of a ton of worker rights, a ton of environmental rights. And this was the easiest way for you to sneak it through because it wasn't you guys pushing bills that weaken other ones or doing, you know, active deregulation. This was just you gutting the whole thing and no one would have known what was gutted until after the sunset, as you point out. That was the point of the bill. You know, this defense she's making here is embarrassing because this is what groups, you know, consumer groups, experts, uh, labor politicians, all the other politicians, SNP, Greens, whatever, they were all saying this bill is bad because we don't know what's going to be left. And now Kemi's like, oh, you know, we had to uh, water down the bill because uh, no one would have known what was left. And if it wasn't for me, these things, you know, no one would have known. It's like, yes, that's why Mog passed the bill in the first place. You can't come in here after being the arsonist in terms of helping push this stuff through because let's not forget she was a minister there is collective responsibility even if it's not her department and she voted for this stuff to go through originally it was the lords once again the bloody house of lords the unelected people who have saved us from these tory um these tory arsonists the the house of lords unelected older people you know that are generally meant to be captains of industry and all sorts of things that you know it's kind of been watered down tremendously over the last you know few decades or for longer they're the ones who saved us, again. And I was not going to let that happen on my watch. But, but isn't it the case that a bonfire of unnecessary regulations is precisely what the Commons voted for? I don't think so. And really? I think- That's not true, because that's what literally what they voted for. They voted to get rid of the 4,000 or so EU era laws. Sometimes uh, we, what, what we voted for was getting rid of regulation that we don't need. Yes. And that's what is happening. Yes, but to, the, to that extent, what the Commons voted for was a bonfire of unnecessary regulations to get rid of all those unnecessary regulations. This is, this is the problem the, the Tories are going to keep running into, especially under Sunak. You can't please this, these kind of Brexiteers because they're fundamentalist. You know, we've gone over the Rachel Sharby clip where she talks about the fact that Brexiteers, it's fundamentalism. It's almost a cult, a religion. Those, those are my words. Those last ones are not hers. But it's become a cult, in my opinion. And, you know, these guys, or, you know, these Brexiteers, what they want is an abolition of all those EU era laws. Some of them for ideological reasons, some of them because they probably gain from it financially. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But, you know, what Sunak is trying to do by trying to keep some of these Brexiteers happy, it's not going to work. 
it's, it's just not going to work. And, you know, we've seen three resignations so far. I, I don't know what we'll see from the ERG lot, honestly. Um, but it's not looking too great for the uh, for Sunak. And, um, you know, there's, there's more. There's more clips I want to discuss. I thought I was having private and confidential meetings. I was reading the contents in... So this is about the, the bill before it was like kind of passed? Because I knew you had concerns and it's public knowledge that we had private meetings because when I thought I was having private and confidential meetings, I was reading the contents in the Daily Telegraph. Why were you reading the Telegraph? Why don't you just ask your colleagues, the ones who were in charge at the time? I think it was Moggy. Why are you reading the Telegraph? Why don't you just ask Moggy, oh, what the hell's going on in your department, dog? What is the point of us as MPs voting through legislation, which is not doing what we wanted to do, just so we can say, well, we passed this legislation? Our job is to deliver for the people of this country. I'll be, I'll be real, Kemi. You guys haven't delivered for the people of this country in 13 years. If you were a, uh, a postwoman, if you were for the Royal Mail, you'd be fired because you ain't delivering nothing. And what the people of the country want is reform that makes their lives better. Not just saying we've deleted things from the statute. What, what they want is what? What the people of the country want is reform that makes their lives better. So, you know those 600 uh, laws you're looking to get rid of? How do any of those make people's lives better? But you see how they've kind of pivoted away from, we're going to get rid of all the EU era laws, an absolute bonfire to, oh, we're, we're looking at just trimming around the edges. Brexiters don't care about that. There's no nuance. They don't have nuance. Let's be honest. All they see is EU era laws they want to get rid of. And, you know, there's more. In the Daily Telegraph. So with respect, I would like to dispute quite a lot of what you have said. But secondly, you are saying that the Commons voted for this without um, any dispute and the Lords changed it. This is parliamentary process. One, this is not the Lords who changed it, but the Lords did support the change that I made to the schedule. And the reason why I made the change to the schedule is because I could see that the intent of the bill was not what was happening. So that guy, the MP, he was like, oh, you know, the Lords changed it and blah, blah, blah. You know, when the Lords can offer amendments and it's the Commons, it's effectively bad or not she's accepted those amendments by the sounds of it. What is the point of us as MPs voting through legislation, which is not doing what we wanted to do, just so we can say, well, we passed this legislation? And so it's just a bit of a recap there. Um, it's just because the, the, this clip has a cut. Um, but point, point being is like, um, there's open infighting in the Tory party. Oops, sorry. There's open infighting in the Tory party over this stuff, and it's hilarious. It's so funny to watch this. They are openly fighting about the amount of deregulation because they don't want you know, 600 or so le um, bits of legislation revoked. They want all of it gone. These are the people who want the Northern Ireland Protocol gone or you know, the Windsor Framework, whatever you want to call it now, gone. These are fundamentalist, hardcore Brexiteers who don't care for small wins. They want absolute wins. And you know the fact that they see Sunak going, going small, they don't like it, especially because I reckon some of this lot, people like Andrea Jenkins would have want Boris Johnson back. Um, because he was a guy they thought was going to act in absolute, you know, not these half measures, full Brexit measures. So for Kerry Badnotch to get lit up by her own kind of colleague in a Tory MP is just hilarious. And we're going to see more and more of this um, in the as the months go by, because what the Brexiteers want, what the radical Brexiteers want, and what Sunak is offering is just not the same. It's not the same, and that's why they're going to keep running into problems. Um, it will be interesting to see uh, if we see the Windsor framework come back in uh, to be voted on, because there were a lot of abstentions. It'll be interesting to see um, how Tory MPs kind of vote on it um, to see if Sunak can get it passed. Most likely he will with opposition votes, uh, but it'd be kind of embarrassing if he does. Um, but yeah, this was this was fun. Honestly, I really enjoyed this. Hopefully we see more um, open party inviting, uh, infighting, um, and yeah, we, we I love to see it. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.